Till now, we have learnt about the vital organs and sense organs of the human body. Now, we shall move on to the topic, the proper functioning of the human body with different organ systems. Different organs work together to perform a common function like how the parts of our digestive system breaks down food. We refer to an integrated unit as an organ system. The human body is made up of 11 important organ systems including the circulatory, respiratory, digestive, excretory, nervous and endocrine systems. They also include the immune, integumentary, skeletal, muscle and reproductive systems. The systems work together to maintain a functioning human body. Now let us look into each organ system of the human body in detail. First, we shall learn about the circulatory system. The circulatory system is a vast network of organs and vessels that is responsible for the flow of blood, nutrients, hormones, oxygen and other gases to and from cell. The circulatory system is mainly composed of the heart and the blood vessels. Heart The heart is located slightly to the left of the middle of the chest. The heart is made of strong muscle tissue and is protected by the ribcage. The heart is a muscular organ with four hollow chambers, two ventricles and two atria. The bottom part of the heart is divided into two chambers called the right and left ventricles which pump blood out of the heart. The upper part of the heart is made of the other two chambers of the heart called the right and left atria. The right and left atria receive the blood entering the heart. A wall called the interventricular septum divides the ventricles. The tricuspid valve separates the right atrium from the right ventricle and the mitral valve separates the left atrium and the left ventricle. Two other heart valves separate the ventricles and the large blood vessels that carry blood leaving the heart. These valves are called the pulmonic valve which separates the right ventricle from the pulmonary artery leading to the lungs and the aortic valve which separates the left ventricle from the iota, the body's largest blood vessel. Blood Vessels The blood vessels are one of the most important circulatory system organ. Blood vessels carrying blood away from the heart are called arteries. Blood vessels that carry blood back to the heart are called veins. Capillaries are very tiny blood vessels that form a connection between arteries and veins. The capillary walls facilitate the transfer of oxygen, nutrients and wastes in and out of our body. The heart is covered by two membranes called pericardial membrane. The space between the two layers of pericardial membrane is filled with pericardial fluid which protects the heart from shocks. The blood vessels which are observed on the walls of the heart are called coronary vessels. They supply blood to the muscles of the heart. A total of six blood vessels are attached to the heart out of which two blood vessels are rigid and the remaining four are less rigid. The rigid vessels are called arteries. They originate from the heart and supply blood to various organs of the body. Iota is the largest artery. It supplies oxygenated blood to the body parts. Pulmonary artery is the smallest one. It supplies deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. Veins are the less rigid vessels that bring blood from different parts of the body to the heart. Superior vena cava is present at the anterior end of the right side of the heart. It collects blood from anterior parts of the body. 
Inferior vena cava is present at the posterior end of the heart. It collects blood from posterior part of the body. The left auricle has two pulmonary veins. It collects blood from lungs. The openings between auricles and ventricles are protected by valves. The two auricles and two ventricles are separated from each other by muscular partitions called septa. The valve present on the right auriculoventricular septum between right atrium and right ventricle is referred to as tricuspid valve. The valve present on the left auriculoventricular septum between left atrium and left ventricle is referred to as bicuspid valve or mitral valve. A major blood vessel that originates from right ventricle is pulmonary iota. The valves present at the region of pulmonary iota are called pulmonary valves. A major blood vessel originates from left ventricle is systemic iota. The valves present at the region of systemic iota are called systemic valves. Drag and drop puzzle. From the image on screen, Identify the parts of the heart. The first one is done for you. Let us observe the important organs in the respiratory system. The respiratory system allows us to take in vital oxygen and expel carbon dioxide in a process we call breathing. It consists mainly of the nose, windpipe or trachea, the diaphragm and the lungs. Let's see what the important organs in the respiratory system are. Nose the nose is the primary upper respiratory organ in which air enters into and exits from the body. Pharynx Besides the nose, air can enter into the lungs through the mouth. The pharynx is a tubular structure positioned behind the oral and nasal cavities that allows air to pass from the mouth to the lungs. Larynx from the pharynx, air enters into the larynx, commonly called the voice box. The larynx is a part of the upper respiratory tract that has two main functions, a passageway for air to enter into the lungs and a source of vocalization. Trachea The tube connecting the throat to the bronchi is called trachea. Bronchi the lower end of trachea or windpipe is divided into two bronchi leading to each lung. The bronchi allows the passage of air to the lungs. Bronchioli Inside the lungs, each of the bronchi divides into smaller bronchi. Alveolus Bronchioles finally get terminated in clusters of air sacs called alveolus. Lungs the lungs are spongy, air-filled organs located on both sides of the chest cavity. The left lung is divided into a superior and inferior lobe and the right lung is subdivided into a superior, middle and inferior lobe. Respiration is the primary function of the lungs which includes the transfer of oxygen found in the atmosphere into the bloodstream and the release of carbon dioxide into the air. Diaphragm. It is a double domed sheet of skeletal muscle located below the lungs. Contraction of the diaphragm causes the chest or thorax cavity to expand, which occurs during inhalation. During exhalation, the release of the diaphragm causes the chest or thorax cavity to contract. First, let us start our chapter with an important internal organ the respiratory system we need air to live
We know that the process of breathing in and breathing out air is called respiration. The important organs of the respiratory system are nose, windpipe and lungs. The inhaled air enters into our nostrils. The walls of the nostrils are wet and have tiny hair. These hair protect our nose from dust and prevent dirt particles from entering into our body. From the nostrils, the inhaled air enters into the windpipe or trachea. The windpipe divides itself into two and opens into the lungs. Lungs absorb the oxygen from air. They are situated in our chest region. Lungs are made up of many tiny structures called pleura. These structures help in the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The walls of the pleura are made up of tiny blood capillaries. These capillaries help in absorbing the oxygen from the air we breathe in and transport it to all parts of the body through blood. In a similar manner, carbon dioxide and water vapor are sent out of the body. The doctor who treats the disease of lungs is called a pulmonologist. Let us observe the pathway of air from nostrils to alveolus. Nostrils. Generally, the air enters into the body through nostrils. Nasal cavity. It removes the dirt present in the air with the help of hair that grows from its sides. It has moist surface. As the inhaled air passes through the nasal cavity, its temperature is brought close to the body's temperature. Nasal cavity collects the water vapor present in the air, hence it becomes more moist than before. Pharynx Pharynx is a part of digestive system and also the respiratory system. The function of pharynx is to warm and moist the air and carry it into the lungs. The human pharynx is usually divided into three sections. They are Nasopharynx, Epipharynx, Oropharynx, Mesopharynx, Laryngopharynx, Hypopharynx. Epiglottis, a flap-like muscular valve, controls movement of air and foot towards their respective passages. Larynx. Larynx is commonly called as voice box. It is an organ present in the neck of animals, reptiles and mammals. The function of larynx is, it helps in breathing and sound production. The voice box contains vocal cords. When air passes from lungs to the vocal cords, it causes them to vibrate and manipulates the pitch and volume based on the speech, songs, etc. Trachea The trachea or windpipe is the tube that connects the pharynx and larynx to the lungs. It allows the passage of air to the lungs. Touch your neck to feel the tube-like structure. Bronchus The lower end of trachea or windpipe is divided into two bronchi, leading to each lung. A bronchus is also called as a main or primary bronchus. The function of bronchus is it helps in passage of air in the respiratory tract that carries air into the lungs. Bronchioles The bronchi is further divided into smaller branches called bronchioles. In bronchi, the exchange of gases does not take place. Alveolus Bronchioles finally get terminated in clusters of air sacs called alveolus. An alveolus is an anatomical structure that is in hollow cavity shape. Alveolus are very small and numerous and are found in the lung parenchyma. The exchange of gases takes place here 
as blood capillaries take in oxygen and push out carbon dioxide. The entire passage of air from nostrils to alveolus is moist and warm. While breathing, the air moves from the nasal cavity to the pharynx. Here is a tricky situation from the pharynx. There are two passageways, one to the lungs and the other to the stomach. This traffic is maintained properly by a flap-like valve called epiglottis which protects the tube to the lungs by arresting entry of food. Observe the pictures and discuss the epiglottis and its functioning while breathing or swallowing. This valve closes temporarily when we swallow food and deflects the food down towards the stomach and maintains it out of the trachea or windpipe which is the route to the lungs. When we breathe air, epiglottis opens more widely and air enters into the lungs. For guiding the function of epiglottis and passage of food and air, nervous regulation is essential. The events or steps in respiration. Click each tab to know more. Let us learn how the exchange of gases takes place from alveoli to capillaries. The exchange of gases takes place within the lungs by diffusion from the alveoli to blood capillaries and vice versa. In the alveoli, the carbon dioxide present in the blood is exchanged with oxygen. The lungs consist of many tiny air sacs and one cell thick. These are surrounded by capillaries. The dark red color blood flows from the heart through these capillaries. At this time, the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place in the blood. That is, the oxygen is collected from the alveoli and the carbon dioxide flows out of the capillaries into the alveoli. When we breathe out, the carbon dioxide passes out into the atmosphere. The bright red oxygen blood is returned to the heart and pumped out to the body. As a result of gaseous exchange, the percentage composition of inhaled and exhaled air is different. Now, let us observe the chart for the difference in percentage of gases when the air is inhaled and exhaled. From the chart, it is observed that there is a difference in the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide when inhaled and exhaled. Let us learn the reason for this in further concepts. We know that air is a mixture of gases. It enters into our body up to the lungs and alveoli. The relative amount of gases and their combining capacity with hemoglobin and other substances in blood determine their transport via blood in the body. When oxygen present in the air which we inhale is within normal limits, say around 21%, then almost all of it is carried in the blood by combining with hemoglobin. A protein same as that of chlorophyll is present in the red blood cells. The only major difference being iron is present in place of magnesium. As oxygen is diffused into the blood, it rapidly combines with the hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin. The hemoglobin not only combines with oxygen, but the reverse process can also happen to yield a molecule of hemoglobin and oxygen. The carbon dioxide present in air which we inhale is generally transported as a bicarbonate while some amount of it combines with hemoglobin and the remaining amount dissolves in blood plasma. Let us learn how exchange of gases takes place in tissue level.
Hemoglobin meets a different environment in the capillaries over the tissues. The tissue cells use oxygen continuously because of which the concentration of oxygen decreases. It might be only one third part of that present in the lungs. As the concentration of oxygen is low, oxyhemoglobin releases an oxygen molecule which enters the cells. The reactions that occur within the cells of our body are carbon dioxide and water are produced and the energy is released. This energy is used for different purposes. The cells expel them into blood capillaries. The term cellular respiration refers to the pathway by which cells release energy from the chemical bonds of food molecules. This energy is used for body functioning. All living cells carry cellular respiration, whether it may be in the presence of oxygen, aerobic respiration or in the absence of oxygen, anaerobic respiration or fermentation. Cellular respiration in prokaryotic cells, like bacteria, occurs within the cytoplasm. In eukaryotic cells, Cellular respiration occurs in both the cytoplasm and mitochondria. A series of chemical reactions takes place with release of energy when a sugar molecule breaks down. Each small parcel of chemical energy that is formed when the sugar is break down is stored in a special compound called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP is an energy-rich compound that is capable of carrying energy whenever required in the cell. Each ATP molecule provides 7200 calories of energy. This energy is stored in the form of phosphate bonds. The energy stored get released when the phosphate bond breaks up. Justify whether cells of alveoli or lungs also need oxygen in order to carry out cellular respiration. Let us observe the pathway for cellular level starting from glucose. Drag and drop puzzle. From the image on screen, identify the parts of the pathway of air. The first one is done for you.